I came here because my choice was simple. Live or die. My species is dying. Why are you telling me this? You are vital to the mission. Go. Take him. Now. It's the last stand, and here is your host, Brian Custer. That's right, it is the last stand. We bring you the biggest names in the sport. And joining us today, our guests, when you talk about promoters, one of the biggest in the sport of boxing. He is the CEO of Mayweather Promotions, Leonard Ellerby. My man. Thank you for having me on, Brian. <laughs> it's been a while. Man, look, man, you look good. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, listen, you, you got this, the fight you had Tank and Roley. Obviously, one of the big stories going into the fight was when Tank said, hey, I've fulfilled my contract with Mayweather Promotions. I'm looking to be a free agent. What was your reaction when he came to you and said that? Um, actually, it was on social media. Mm. Um, I really didn't have a reaction because, you know, me, I understand overall, like, how fighters are sometimes. They, you know, they get emotional. Um, and sometimes they react and say things and sometimes don't really think things all the way through and, you know, and, and it's okay, you know, because that's part of, you know, uh, maturation, you know, understanding, you know, what you're saying sometimes can affect other things. But me personally, you know, I understand big picture and, and what it's about and I can't get caught up in to those kind of things. Um, but, you know, the public thinks, and I just have to go and do my job and at the best of my abilities and make this promotion as big as possible. And we have a huge event on Saturday night. Well, um, it, it, Tank is, has always been a box office seller. I mean, he packs people into your arenas. He leaves Mayweather Promotions. How big of a hit would that be? Um, it's tremendous. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, you, it's part of life you know um, you just uh, keep doing what you're doing um, the, the, the question I, I have to you is when, when a fighter gets to let's say tank status right mm -hmm. um, is there a need for a promoter kind of like when, when Floyd I guess left top rank is, is there is there oh most definitely oh. Now, don't get this twisted and not you because people don't understand that um, the value of having a promoter and especially the best in the game, mm -hmm. okay? For an example, you know, you look at all the other fighters that are out there who have promoters and who don't have promoters. And we just look at, you know, um, inside the PBC. Um, Tank Davis is the biggest name over there, I, minus uh, Earl Spence, mm -hmm. you know, and why is that so? Mm -hmm. Because Tank has a, a tremendous push behind him and, and we know exactly what we're doing. When we got Tank, um, Tank was, I think, 11 and 0. Mm -hmm. And um, within 14 months, he was fighting for the championship of the world, you know, and making millions of dollars moving forward. And there's no other fighter in the PBC or in all of boxing that's doing that. He's the, the, the uh, most successful rising young star in the entire sport. I think there's only two American fighters that you can actually say that are bigger than him, and that's. Earl and Canelo, and, he, and Tank's only 27 years old, and both of them are in their 30s, mm -hmm. early 30s. Yeah. How, how do you respond to, and, and people say it all the time, they say, well, you know what, Tank was part of the Mayweather Protection Program that, that, that carefully selected opponents, kept him from elite fighters in the division. That's the reason why he wants to spread his wing. He wants bigger fights, big time fights. How do, you, how do you respond to that? Well, Tank is a, a very intelligent young man. And, and as each, day, each growing day, he understands kind of what's at stake and where he's going and how it happens. I don't pay attention to those kind of things because let me tell you why is that there, there's nothing like having a great team who know what they're doing. You know, nobody's protecting him from anything. There's a time for everything. And the fights that some of the diehard fans that they talk about, those aren't big fights. Mm -hmm. They really aren't. There's a, there are good names, but they aren't big fights. And if you talk to, you know, another successful promoter like a, a Bob Aaron, for example, 
Bob will tell you out the gate, he's not putting his guy in with someone who's not affiliated with his promotion because the fact of the matter, especially if his guy hadn't done anything to sell any tickets, to, to build himself up, he wants to, do, he wants to build his, his, uh, his fighter up to eventually be a successful draw. What we were able to do with Tank in, in a short period of time is building, building him into an attraction which is a very, very difficult thing to do because if it was that easy, we would have more stars in the sport. And I've just told you, we, as far as stars in the sport, right now we only have like three mm. in the entire sport. Wow. Yeah. You know, so I don't pay attention to those kind of things. Those are just the, the haters and the naysayers because we're very successful at what we're doing. And, and building a young fighter is a process. If there was a fighter out there who who stood out and a fight made sense, then we make it in a heartbeat. But there's nobody out there right now that, because when you look at all the other fighters that are in the sport, and they don't have to be on this side or the other side, who's making the most noise? Mm. You know, everybody's kind of doing the same thing. Tank is out there doing, you know, $4 million gates. So what, just let's put this in perspective. You can take, any of the top fighters from 130, 135, and 140. So you call a name, you, whether it's Ryan Garcia, whether it's Tio Lopez, whether it's Cambosis, Devin Haney, uh, any of those guys, you can put them all together. Mm -hmm. And they're not generating the kind of revenue that Tank does each and every fight. And it's not even close. He's doing this by himself. And some of the fans are saying, well, he hadn't fought this guy. Knew. Well, that's not true because at the end of the day, these are top fighters that he's fighting, but they're not just the, the guys you're talking about. And at the end of the day, if they were top fighters, they would be putting behinds in them seats. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm talking about as far as being an attraction. All these fighters that I'm talking about are very good fighters, but they just haven't reached that point in their careers yet where they have become attractions. And at the end of the day, no fighter is putting a guy in a fight and he's getting ready to lose money. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality of business, and boxing is a business. C considering that, do you believe Tank Davis will eventually re-sign back with Mayweather? Why not? Why, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, we work well together, and there aren't any issues at all. People try to make, make things out to be something that they actually aren't, because the, um, as I always say, people want to see that divide and conquer thing. We are doing our thing and been doing our thing. Tank is that dude. He is that guy. Like I said, when you look around, every one of our events are jam-packed, and it's a reason why. Tank is doing his job, and Mayweather Promotions is doing their job. Uh, what did you think when uh, Eddie Hearn came out and said, I'm opening, open to signing Tank Davis, and I'll overpay for him just to get under Leonard Ellaby's skin? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's been no secret um, that my opinion of him, I think he's the biggest fucking clown in all of boxing. And I have a, a very, very good reason why I say that. You know, here it is, a guy that has openly told the entire world that he was coming to America to take over boxing. Okay, let's leave that right there. He's coming to America to take over boxing. And he had a budget of well over a billion dollars. I repeat, a billion dollars. And what he has done, he has come over to the United States and didn't know the first thing about the marketplace at all. And excuse me for cursing again. No, no problem. And, and he's fucked off over a billion dollars. And there's nothing to show for it. Nothing other than what I am happy, though, for the fighters who got paid, you know, who got paid a lot of money. I'm very happy about that. But as far as a businessman, you know, just think about this for a second. If he was an NBA general manager and he was given a budget, you know, because obviously everyone has a salary cap to build teams. What do you think would happen? You've spent all this money and you haven't developed a, a franchise, a winning franchise. You would get fired the same way in the NFL. 
you know, you be a, a NFL GM, you 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 have you have a budget. Yeah. You know, you have a salary cap. You got to be within that, and you expect to bring in the best players because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And that's he's one thing he's really good at with promoting. The, he's really done a good job with with the women. He's done a, I, and I give him, boxing, yeah, yeah, I give him credit where credit is due. But as far as the American market, he knows nothing about it because he he doesn't have anything to show for it. And when you look at the Zone USA, it's been a failure. Mm. And it's been well documented. That's that's not only my opinion. Those those are facts. Yeah. You know, and and he speaks on things because what it is is that he's a very jealous guy. He's a very jealous guy. And and what it is is that you know he thought that he was going to be able to come over here because he got the big checkbook and and just. But it, it's a method to this. We understand myself, Al Heyman, and Floyd Mayweather. We understand what this marketplace is. When you look at Mayweather Promotions, we hold all the records for the biggest pay-per-views in the history of the sport, the biggest live gates in the history of the sport. So that should tell you everything what you need to know. Yeah. Um, talking about Eddie Hearn, he said, quote, why are we the biggest global promotional company in the world, bar none? Leonard Ellerby, not even relevant, actually in the boxing industry. When do you talk, when you talk about top promoters in the world, do you even mention Leonard Ellerby? Let's be honest, not in a million years, but you're gonna mention Eddie Hearn. Well, cause he's the loudest, he has the loudest mouth. You know, he, 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 he wants to be bigger than the fighters. And, and that's a fact. I mean, Bob will tell you that, Lou DiBella will tell you that, any, any of the excellent promoters, the guys who are over here, they'll tell you that. You know, he's just a loud mouth because it's about whoever talked the loudest. And again, you can't, you, you, you can't come over to the United States thinking you going to be loud and, and that, that don't get you nowhere. You got to understand what the marketplace looks like. When you're signing fighters, you got to understand, okay, who are you going to match them up with? You don't have no access to any of the fighters, the top fighters that are out there. You have a, a bunch of very good fighters, but at the end of the day, who are they going to fight? Yeah. You, haven't, you haven't made no big fights yet. And as it relates to his knowledge of understanding how to um, match fights, look what he did to Anthony Joshua. You know, I feel really bad. Joshua is a, a nice young man, and I think he's a terrific fighter. But here it is. There's no promoter that would put their fighter as big as Anthony Joshua is overseas, put him in with Andy Ruiz in three weeks notice. Who does that? You know, you completely have, excuse my friends, fucked up Anthony Joshua's career. You've kind of done the same thing with Canelo, and this is why. Because when you look at Canelo, and if we're honest, when you look at Canelo, Canelo was a much bigger fighter than he was when he signed to that app that nobody watches, you know, his numbers have gone down drastically. If you look at his last pay-per-view fight just recently with Baval, it was trash. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Alvarez and, and Plant just did between 750 and 800,000. Mm -hmm. You know, they did like a third of that, almost a third, a little, a little over 300,000. You know, you look at the live gate, they did 18 million with, um, with, he did 18 million with Plant. This gate right here wasn't even nine million dollars. And it's just an example of that uh, Canelo's popularity has gone down drastically because again, he signed to an app that nobody watches. So all the fighters over there, they, they're not getting the visibility that they deserve. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody watches the zone. Nobody watches the zone. And he was the same guy that said pay-per-view was dead and, and spent a bunch of money on all these slogans and it's just, again, he's a clown, and everyone knows that. That's why you just laugh, and I'm not going to go back and forth with him because he know what time of day it is. It, when did the beef start? What, do you recall? When, when did, what was the... He know what it is, uh -huh. he, he, and it's something very personal, and, and I, 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 I gave him a phone call. Mm. I gave him a phone call a while ago. He know what time of day it is, and it's just that, again, he... he, he again, I don't want to go back, in, I mean, back into all of that because, again, I just try to... I try to be as professional as I possibly can, but that's the one guy that I can honestly say that if I had the opportunity, I stump him out. Mm. Wow. 
Um, talk to me about the future. What do you see as the future for Mayweather Promotions? I think we have a big future. I mean, it starts, I mean, not starts, it continues, you know, with Saturday night. You know, we're promoting this huge event and we have both fighters and somebody's gonna come out of this fight as a loser and the other fight, the other fighter is gonna come out on top and then we'll see what's next, next steps for, for that guy. You know, I'm, I'm very confident that moving forward, we're gonna continue to do the same things that we've been doing, continue to, to make a lot of noise. See, you know, we don't want 200 fighters under our umbrella. But the, the great thing about us is that we have a great working relationship with um, Al, he's our business partner. Um, and, and, and obviously Floyd, me and him are business partners. And we, we do a lot of great things together, you know, behind the scenes, you know, and um, again, it's just been a tremendous blessing to work with two brothers who really understand the sport and we've, you know, just broke all these records and we're gonna continue to do that. And, and who's the next big star under Mayweather Promotions? Ooh, we have a, a quite a few young guns, as I, I say, you know, um, and I don't want to leave any names out, but we have, we have a, a great, great roster of young talent, and we've been very selective about what we're doing, you know, and again, because when you, when you have, you know, an, an abundance of fighters, it's hard to kind of focus on, like him. He has all this going on, and you don't know what you're doing, and, and it's like, you can't make, you can't put nobody in a big event because you don't have no access to anything. You, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and kind of touching on that, um, Bruce Trampler is a guy that I have a great deal of respect for. I think he's the best matchmaker in the history of sport. He told me recently, he said, what these fans don't understand that when a big fight is to be made, it has to make sense for both sides. And so you, when you think, really think about that, it just speaks volumes of what the reality is. No promoter or company is going to put their guy in an event with everything to lose and nothing to gain, especially when we're talking about this. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. Interesting. Uh, there, there was a story that Floyd had reached out to Jerron in and said, I really love your talent, this and that. And then people were like, wait a minute. Is that the next guy under Mayweather well, Promotions? Well, Floyd didn't reach out to him mm. because he has a promoter. Mm -hmm. So let me be clear on that. And I know who his promoter is. Got a great deal of respect for him. Jerron Ennis is a tremendous fighter. It's no, no secret. He reminds me a lot, and I'm not comparing them, mm -hmm. about his work ethic about Floyd. He, he totally reminds, he's a guy that is locked in a thousand percent. He eats, sleeps, and drinks boxing. He don't drink, he don't smoke, he don't party. He just, he's a boxing head. He's a gym rat. You know, he has, he's, he has a, a tremendous trainer and his dad, two, you know, they come from a great family. I got a great deal of respect for him, but he, but it's no secret. It's no secret, Floyd, I, I, I think I did an interview the other day. Floyd called me, it was a while ago, and he was like, who the F <laughs> is this dude? Like, I said, I've been telling you about him. And so I think that as, as it relates to the young, the next young guy that's out there, mm -hmm. He's gonna be that guy because he, he, has, he has the goods. He has the entire package. Interesting, interesting. Uh, how did you get into boxing? I um, used to be an amateur boxer myself as a kid, you know, coming up through the amateur system. And, and what happened with me is I start, you know, just, th you know how sometimes things aren't meant to be, like before a big tournament, you, I break my right hand, break my, because I, I broke my hand on like four different occasions. I turned my ankle running, and so it was like, then after a while, and I was, I was pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my mom told me, she said, baby, she said, God got something else in store for you. And I was like, what, mom? And she was like, maybe you just need to go to school and get your education. And I thought about it, and it was just like, okay. And that's what I did. I went and got my bachelor's and got my master's in business. And then I, 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 I had worked, already was working with Roger. And he introduced me to Floyd when Floyd was like 13 years old, you know, and we cultivated a relationship with uh, obviously his other uncle, Jeff. I was very close to him. I was coming back and forth to Vegas and, and, and it was like, oh, my nephew's going to turn pro and, you know, come, you know. And so I came out there and, and we clicked instantly. 
And you know, it was a grind and I, it was the best move that I could have ever made. Mm. I left everything lock, stock and barrel in DC. And I just, I rolled the dice and took a chance. And, and God has truly blessed me to, to work with a, a, a tremendous young man. And, and we broke all these records, me, him and Al Heyman together. And obviously Showtime, you know, Steven Espinosa, I got to give him a lot of credit too. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Brian Custer, and our new podcast partner is Athletic Greens. You know, I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted more energy, and I got to say, I really love it. Uh, Athletic Greens, it doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It has that really mild kind of tropical taste, and I'm telling you, you're going to like it. So what is Athletic Greens? But I'm going to tell you one delicious scoop of AG1, and you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. And it contains less than one gram of sugar. There are no GMOs and no nasty chemicals or artificial anything at all while still tasting good. And it supports better sleep quality, recovery time, and also supports your mental clarity and alertness. AG1 is a small micro habit of big benefits, and it's the one thing you can do every single day to take care of yourself. And it's lifestyle friendly. So uh, whether you eat keto, paleo, you're vegan, you're dairy free, or gluten free, and it costs you less than $3 a day. And additionally, for every purchase, uh, AG1 is donating to organizations to help get nutritious foods to kids in need. In fact, no kid hungry here in the U.S. Well, in 2020, Athletic Greens donated 1.2 million to kids. Now, look, we're going to make this thing simple because Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you've got to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash last stand. Again, athleticgreens.com slash last stand. Take ownership of your health and get yourself Athletic Greens. What do you think you... And, and Floyd did for the sport of boxing. Say it again. What do you think you and Floyd did for the sport of boxing? Ooh, changed the game. Completely changed the game. Me, him, and Al. Completely changed the game. It was like when, when, when we went out and did our own thing, formed our own company, Mayweather Promotions, we showed all the other fighters, you know, out there that not necessarily that, oh, just go and cut a middleman out the, because that's not what it's about. But we figured out that we could do this ourselves. And we understood big picture what it was going to take. And it was going to be tremendous sacrifices that be made. But we had the, the intelligence. We had two very educated men and myself and Al that would put our heads together and come up with a great plan to um, guide Floyd's career. And that's what we were able to do as it relates to Floyd setting the tone, it was like he showed the fighters that they deserved the lion's share of the money. From unlike back in the day when when Bob and Don was controlling the entire sport and when Al formed the PBC, you know, all the fighters got paid, you know, and they were put in great situations. And another example, you haven't heard one fighter from the PBC complain about anything, about I'm not getting paid enough, because we understand what it's about. These young men and women, they go out there and they put their lives on the line, you know, um, for the entertainment of the fans, and they deserve the lion's share of money. And we also have want to educate these fighters that there's life after boxing. And like what we've done with Floyd, is put them in a the position to, you know, he has generational wealth. You know, he gets a seven-figure check for the rest of his life every month. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's what life is about. And he's retired at the young age, early 40, 40, 41, with all his faculties. 
and he's living a, a fantastic life. Mm. And that's what the kind of things that like I've talked to Tank about. You know, want to put him in a position to um, have generational wealth, um, uh, have a great legacy, because the legacy is only defined by what we define that is, not what other people think. Because, you know, oftentimes you hear people say, well, he's 27 years old and he ain't done this. And that. Floyd Mayweather, first, for his very first pay per view at 27 years old. But every fighter is different. Tank Davis isn't Floyd Mayweather. Okay, we have a, we have a era of different kind of talent with, for fighters. You know, so we're going to make the most of all of these opportunities. We're going to put Tank in the biggest fights that are possible for the most amount of money. And he's going to go off. And he's going to be every one of these guys that are out there. They say who's the top guy. Eventually, that'll happen. Mm. Mm. But he's going to be the face of boxing. I, I guarantee you that. You, you know, you talked about how you guys have changed the game. And Floyd certainly did that. And, and especially the way he did it, changing his um, persona, so to speak, from pretty boy to all of a sudden money, uh, Mayweather. Now, all of a sudden, all kind of boxers, you know, want to aspire to do that. You know, they... they they see his, his lifestyle on IG, whether it's the money, whether it's the, the cars, the jewelry, they aspire to that and it motivates them, which is a good thing. Then other people say, well, maybe it's a bad thing because these guys try to emulate Floyd and then go broke. What do you, what do you think about that? Well, all we can do is, is set a positive example. Yeah. But the one thing about when you, you're out there and you're doing it on your own, I'm just being honest. Yeah. You have to have a Leonard Ellaby and a, an Al Heyman in there who's willing to sacrifice their, you know, their lives, essentially, and understand the business and the big picture of how it goes um, to be able to be successful. This isn't just something by happenstance that, oh, we, you know, you just got lucky. You know, we, we put in the work and we made tremendous sacrifices, you know, with our lives to, to, to build Floyd into the position that he is today, mm -hmm. you know, being the most successful boxer ever, I repeat the most successful boxer ever. That's a big deal. That's a huge deal. That's a huge deal. Uh, the, the other, only other criticism I always hear from other people, they say, well, Floyd, now promoter, maybe he should be doing more promoting as, as opposed to doing these ex exhibitions where it's about him. It shouldn't it be about his fathers. How do you, or fighters, how do you respond to that? No, I mean, because at the end of the day, I'm the CEO of the company. I run the company. He's the face of the company, but he's entrusted me to go out there and, and, and do a wonderful job just like I've done with his entire career. So again, Floyd has earned the right to do whatever he wants to do. You know, he's the face of this company and he does any and everything I ask of him, but he has entrusted me with being responsible with guiding these young men's careers and, and that's what I do. Uh, Where's some of your favorite fighters right now? Earl Spence, hmm. uh, Terrence Crawford, um, um, I like Canelo Alvarez. Mm -hmm. um, it's so many. It's, it's so many. I don't want to leave anybody out. You know, it, it's a lot of oh, boots in this. Mm. You know, um, um, J Rock. How about that? Yeah, he's one of actually one of my favorite fighters. Yeah. Um, oh, it's, it's so many guys. I don't want to leave somebody out. So if I leave somebody out, it's it's, it's not intentional. It's just that I I, I have a great relationship with a number of fighters and, and believe it or not, I work with a lot of fighters. It's just behind the scenes. People uh, and not under Mayweather promotion. Not on no, Why don't you no, just advise them? I do a lot of things behind the scene and, and this, this is what I'm saying. We don't have to, what's understood ain't gotta be talked about. Wow. You know, and I'm not a, I'm not a loud, mouth, loud mouth person who goes out there like that other clown yeah. and says, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. It's just you, you help people, these young men, with the simplest of things, with, with whether it's conversations, whether it's working out this or working out that, you, you know, you help guide them. And I'm, I'm very glad that I've had a, a, a tremendous impact behind the scenes with a lot of these fighters who are very successful today. Mm. Do you see yourself like a Bob Arum be, uh, retiring in the sport, being, you know, 80, 80 some years old and, and leading Mayweather promotions and retiring in the sport? No, I, no, no, no. I, I again, you know, I'm, I'm in my, I'm in my late fifties and you know, it's, it's, this is, this is a lot. It's yeah. a lot of wear and tear on you, you know, 
I have I have kids now, yeah. you know, and and I haven't been able to really kind of, you know, um, enjoy that. It's a lot you of know, travel. You, you, you know, you know what I'm saying. But I've been able to do that. It's like right now, you know, it's like even when I look at my daughter, you know, she's you know she's a basketball player now. So I'm, you know, the girl dad, and you know, kind of traveling around, and you know, and and my little one is it's like you know he's young, and and it's like so you want to be there for your kids and be able to, you know, give them the guidance that they need, you know, when you, when you look at things, it's that, you know, because tomorrow's never promised. So I don't want to be doing this 30 years from now, you know, we've been very successful at this. And, you know, I, I, there are a few things I want to accomplish before, you know, I do retire and go into the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. one day. How about that? Um, it's, it's, and one of the things is that, you know, making our fighters, you know, as big as possible, putting them in, in the best situation to, you know, chase greatness. Hmm. Uh, Leonard, for everybody who comes on the show, we allow people to submit questions through social media. We've got a lot of them for you, so we'll get right to them. Um, let's see here. It says here, this one from Your Boxing. Uh, now that Tank is gone and will be a free agent, will you focus more on Richardson Hitchens? Well, first off, Tank hasn't, left Mayweather Promotions, okay. Um, secondly, Richard Hitchin, Richardson Hitchens is a tremendous young fighter, and my focus is on him. But there's, there's, some of the fans have to be patient. Mm. Every fighter is different, and you have to move every fighter differently. You have to understand the talent level of your fighters and, and that person, you know, and, and, me and me and Richardson, we have a great working relationship. And, and he's going to be champion of the world very soon, hmm. very soon. Uh, Archbishop from Twitter asks, uh, is the relationship you think with Tank uh, unrepairable at this, at this point? And what was the tipping point when you knew uh, this was going to be the last fight with him? Well, again, I don't want to discuss, you know, um, any of our fighters' contracts and, and where we're at with them. But I can just honestly say that me and Tank have a great relationship and always have had a great, very great relationship. He's a very respectful young man, and you know, and I treat him accordingly, and we have great dialogue. And, and again, the, the 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 sky's the limit on yeah. where where we're going. Uh, Nika from Twitter asks, "Who are your favorite five boxers currently fighting?" Oh, I just kind of kind with that Errol Spence. You say Errol, Errol Spence, Spence Terrence Crawford. Yeah. I like Canelo. Um, Boots Ennis, you saying? Boots Ennis, yeah. yeah. Got it. Uh, Brother Mazone from Twitter asks, do you think Tank will stay with the PBC and Al Heyman? Of course. Okay. Uh, Doc the Kid from Twitter says, if you had an unlimited budget and you could make three fights in boxing, which fights would you make? Ooh. That's a great question. One, the number one would be Terrence Crawford and, and, and Earl, Earl Spence. Spence. Ooh. Right now, I, I, um, probably, probably Canelo and, and either Charlo and Benav or Benavidez, Benavidez yes. one, you know, either yes. one. Yeah. Um, And Tank and whoever else rises to the, you know. Love it. Yeah. And I, you know, an oldie but goodie I would love to see. Wilder and Anthony Joshua. Oh, yeah, that's God. another great, that's another great fight. Man, but we know who effed that one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're hilarious. Um, uh, Fern Dog says, why do you think Haney, Loma, Taylor, those type of cal caliber fighters don't bring nothing to the table against Tank? but you match them with Cruz, Berrios, and Romero. Well, I've never said that they don't bring anything to the table. I might've said that with, about Josh Taylor, but you, you know what, what the fans have to do is just, just be, be patient. Mm -hmm. these, these fights with these guys who they think they're a big, they will eventually happen when they are big fights. Mm -hmm. Because right now, Tank is the biggest name out of all these guys combined, and so, Boxing is a business, and, and I've kind of used this example, and I don't want to use Haney again, but you, you kind of got to say that. It's like, 
at the end of the day, uh, this fighter makes X, you know, and he's been paid very well because him and his dad are smart. Yeah. So, but when they want to fight Javante Davis, they're going to want a lot more money, okay? So, if you make a fight like that, like right this second, okay, how big is that fight? Mm. Okay, what, what are you going to do? Sell out the Barclays Center? Well, Tank is doing that right now by himself, okay? So, in order to make these kind of fights, there has to be a pot of money there so the fighters can get paid. I'm not going to go to Tank and say, just because the fans are impatient at the moment, and say, we're going to make this X fight right here, and you got to take a pay cut. He's going to look at me and say, I'm not doing that. I make X right now, which is almost three times what all these guys are making yeah. by himself right now. Okay, and, and again, you know, there's a, there's a method to all this. Boxing is a business. I'm going to say it again. Boxing is a business. You know, for an example, like, one of the guys, you know, just only generated a half a million dollars for the whole event. The other guy just did, generated a million dollars. So you, you see what I'm saying? It's Absolutely. like, what are you going to just lose a bunch of money? Yeah. You know, ask, ask, won't somebody go and ask Bob Arum that same question? Yeah. And, and I guarantee you he's going to give you the same answer. Well, he talked about that when he, when it came to Terrence Crawford. That was that was his his point about why letting Terrence Crawford go, and because of the money aspect and having to pay him so much, and yet when it came to the views and the pay per views, it wasn't selling like it. Yeah, should. so that 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 makes sense. You know, you have you have one one of the guys who who has generated more revenue, and Ryan Garcia, mm -hmm. for an example. I've tried to make that fight twice, mm -hmm. okay? And I've got rejected, okay? So go ask Golden Boy why they won't put him in with Javante Davis. Go ask him that question. Mm. That's an example. You know, we tried to make Tevin Farmer at that time when it was hot. There's a timing for everything. They might be waiting on whatever to try to build him up, but they're not going to put him in with Tank Davis because they know what's going to happen. That's a good point. Uh, MMA Boxing on Twitter asks, uh, would you do anything differently looking back on how you promoted Tank? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We've done a phenomenal job and we'll continue to do a phenomenal job. Mm. Okay, Leonard Ellaby, we come to the last segment of the show. It is called The Last Stand. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, Leonard Ellaby. Just give me the first thing that comes to okay. your mind. All right, you ready? Mayweather promotions aside, mm -hmm. in your opinion, best promoter in boxing? That's actually a tough question. I would say, ooh, it's, it's a couple guys out there. It's, it's, it's a couple guys out there. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the smaller guys. Okay. They're very good promoters who've done a great job mm -hmm. with moving smaller names. And, you know, Samson Lou Samson's a, a, mm -hmm. is a great promoter. Mm -hmm. Lou's a very good promoter. Mm -hmm. you look what he's done with Ken mm -hmm. So those kind of things, it's like Bob's also a good promoter. Yeah. Eddie's a solid promoter, you, you know, but he's not what he think he is. Right. He ain't the best in this business. <laughs> uh, first thing that comes to your mind when I say Eddie Hearn. The biggest fucking clown in boxing <laughs> ever. Okay. First thing that comes to mind when I say Oscar De La Hoya. Different. <laughs> in a good way or a bad way? Just different. Okay. Just different. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if you had to, again, Tank Davis aside, uh, if you said, this guy, I'm telling you, could be the next big star Mayweather promotions, who would that guy be? Well, again, I don't want to be tampering with nobody's right. contract yeah. or, you know, because I have respect. Yeah. But I would say Boos Ennis. Mm. I love it, love it. Uh, last but not least, at this time next year, mm -hmm. will Tank Davis still be a member of Mayweather Promotions? Most definitely. I love it. I love it. That's how we do it here on The Last Stand. <laughs> we bring you the biggest names in the sport. When you talk about promoters, this guy right here is right there at the top. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again next week. I came here because my choice was simple. 
Live or die. My species is dying. Why are you telling me this? You are vital to the mission. Go. Take him. Now. 